All right. I think we are. Are you live yet? I think we're live. Okay. According to this little thing on Zoom, I'm live. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. See Face it. Facebook is finally saying I'm live. There let we me, are. Uh, let me do one quick thing. Bam. Got it. Done. Rocking and rolling, cuz. All right, here we go. What's up, everybody? It's Scott with Kingdom Gold, and uh, I know it's been a while since I've uh, <clears throat> since we've done an interview, but tonight we have a very special treat. Um, a good friend of mine who um, he was actually uh, uh, so you guys know that I teach at a local technical college, and he was a student of mine. But kind of uh, through that process, we got to be friends, and um, I was able to talk to him, um, you know, the other night, and really, you know, we're very much on the same page as far as. Um, I guess, you know, just securing our own financial future, you know, how, how we see the way the world's going, how the, the, the financial tricks of yesteryear just aren't going to cut it. Um, we talked for what, like an hour and a half, three or yeah, four nights ago. I mean, and, you know, and um, Daniel, I have, I have a lot of respect for Daniel, um, which I probably shouldn't have told him that, but, you know, I have a lot of, <laughs> I have a lot of respect for Daniel. Um, he's active duty military, um, super good guy. And, um, you know, he, he wants to, he wants to build a better future for himself and his family. And um, I thought we would just have a good discussion tonight, kind of talking about a lot of those things. Um, so Daniel, why don't you uh, take it away from here? Um, give us a little, you know, brief introduction on yourself and we'll just, we'll just kind of get this ball rolling. Absolutely. Yeah. My name is uh, Daniel Quave. Uh, like Scott said, I'm, I'm currently in, uh, doing military duty, uh, but I was looking at something after the military, what should I do? What should, uh, how do I, I, this can't be it. This can't be the, uh, the best right. I could do. So, um, with a little bit of downtime, I started looking at some, uh, some research and kind of come across the, the reasons that someone should be an entrepreneur. And, uh, that reason being is the old, the old school way of thinking, uh, save your money, work hard and retire is no longer really the uh, best way to maximize your your money for for uh, for say uh, I've done a lot of research and uh, I've done a lot of learning through this uh, past a uh, little over a year and uh, I've learned quite a bit knowing that this isn't the this can't be the pinnacle for everybody this it, it could go much further right yeah that's really good man and you know we were talking the other day um I, mean, I, I call them the financial tricks of yesteryear, you know, you know, for years, I was told probably just like, you know, you and I know our financial education is very much still like this, you know, save every penny you can, you know, max out your 401k and maybe just maybe if you have $11 million in your 401k by the time you're 70, you know, maybe then you can live your life. Yeah. Um, talk, talk about that a little bit, you know, like what, what so, was your financial education growing up and what made you what made you like ultimately realize that, you know, the I guess that particular path is not the one that's going to guarantee your long term success? Absolutely. So that's, um, a little bit a little bit on my background. Uh, I grew up out in the country, but um, I had a grand, <laughs> couldn't I had tell. A grand, <laughs> yeah, I had a grandfather who was. Uh, uh, he was also retired military and, uh, I always respected my grandfather and, uh, the wisdom that came from him. And especially I got up in my, in my older, you know, late teenage, early 20 years, I, I really started to realize that my grandfather is full of wisdom. Uh, my grandfather used to tell me a lot of things. And, uh, some of the things that he used to tell me, uh, was he used to tell me, son, any man can make money. However, a smart man will make his money, make him money. And at 17 years old, you have no clue what that means. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, all right. Um, sounds Come on, great. you didn't know what that meant as a 17 year old. Come on, man. Right. So at 17 years old, I was kind of confused. Um, uh, however, as I got a little bit older, you know, uh, I, I went through life and kind of realized what he was talking about. And, uh, and then I started dabbling into the stock market, started dabbling into different things that may 
make my dollar into two dollars. So, um, you know, my grandpa always told me if you can't buy it twice, then you don't need it. And uh, that that was a big thing, you know, to me, you know, because when I was young, debt was money to me, and and debt is is a now that I'm in my thirties now I know yes, debt is a fine thing. However. If not used correctly, it could be a very detrimental thing to your uh, to your future. You know, and when I was young, debt was a, a money that I could buy a truck. And uh, I remember my grandpa telling me, uh, "Well, that's the bank's truck." And I said, "No, I, I, right. I, I loan. You know, I got a I got a loan from the bank." And uh, he was like, "No." And he said, "Well, let me ask you a question. Why didn't you buy it cash?" And I said, uh, "Well." I don't have that much cash. And he said, well, then you don't need that much truck and walked off. <laughs> and that taught me a lot. He walked now off. it taught me a lot years later. So, um, so now that now that I'm a little bit older and I, and I realize what he's talking about. Um, you know, my grandpa used to tell me, uh, pay your bills and 20% of your paycheck. You need to pay the stock market or investments like it's a bill. And you just leave it alone and don't mess with it. And I've learned, uh, I've learned the hard way of doing that. Uh, my grandpa was a uh, retired command sergeant major out of the military in 1972. So in 1972, a command sergeant major made about $85,000 a year. So never in my grandpa's life has he ever made more than $85,000 a year. Uh, back in 2000, and 18 or 19 sorry 2019 my grandpa passed away and uh we got looking at his at uh at his assets and and what we're going to do from here on out because my grandpa was always the godfather of our family and uh so we're going to figure out what we're going to do how we you know how do we need to take care of grandma now um uh, and a man that's never made more than eighty five thousand dollars a year was worth 6.7 million. Wow. Just just in investments alone. And if you took his assets and added to that, it would be a little over 10. Wow. That's amazing. How yeah. how uh how old was he when he passed? Grandpa was 86 when he wow. passed. Yeah, so grandpa used to he used to pick with me all the time. He was actually retired longer than he was in the army. And so That's he used a sweet to deal. Yeah, he used to tell me I really got over him on over on them because uh everything <laughs> paid off grandpa's never uh he never had a, a a line of credit he didn't need one he paid right. for everything cash and all his extra money went to investments grandpa has quite a few investment properties he also had a quite a quite an extensive stock portfolio and uh, all together was a little over 10 that's awesome man so okay so let, let's talk about your grandfather a little bit um because <clears throat> I guess what you, the, he seems to have taken a vested interest in your financial education. And um, basically the only thing I was ever told was Scott, if you don't go to college, you're screwed. That's like yeah. literally the only financial education I, I received from my, uh, what, what from, well, real, from my parents, grandparents, whoever picks somebody. <laughs> that's really, yeah, yeah. that's really yeah, all no. I got. And, and obviously, you know, save, 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 blah, blah, blah. And what I've realized <clears throat> since, um, you know, here, here's, here's, here's kind of what, what happened with me. Okay. I, I've done that for years, right? Yep. I've saved as much as I possibly could. I don't live extravagantly by any means. Um, as you can see from all the, you know, the boxes back there and stuff, uh, no offense to my kids, but they don't live extravagantly by any means. Um, you know, I've, I've saved, I put in my 401k, blah, blah, blah. And I realized that then that you just, you can't, you can't save enough, you know, you can't just save enough from your paycheck, you know, week after week, month after month, year after year, because I've been working professionally now for, I, I think it's 13 years actually tomorrow, tomorrow, it'll be 13 years since I graduated college. And, you know, I, I'm not driving fancy cars and all this other stuff. And it's like, you know, I, I have a good life, 
but I'm, I'm always just like one step away from disaster, just like the next guy, you know? And I realized that the, the, the way I was doing it, which was the traditional financial way is just not going to cut it. It's not going to, it's not going to, you know, make sure I have long lasting legacy wealth. Like I want for, you know, for, for me and for my kids. And what's cool about your grandfather, you're talking about like investment properties and he'd been investing in stocks for a really long time. Um, what would you say is like the good stuff your grandfather told you? And what would you say is kind of like along the lines of what I'm talking about, where like there's some of the old things that are no longer applicable, but some of the old things are still very much like tried and true. Um, what would you say is kind of like the, the give and take there? <clears throat> well, I, to be honest, uh, my grandpa, like I said, never believed in debt. If you couldn't pay for it twice, don't buy it. And uh, he so that he, includes like houses, cars, trucks, anything. Correct. That's correct. Any, it doesn't matter what it is. If you can't buy it twice, then you don't need it. And um, however, you know, my grandpa retired in 1972. Um, and from oh, I didn't realize says, that. So he retired in 1972. Correct. Yeah, he died. Cool. He retired in 1972. So, uh, yeah, that's from way my, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a much different time and day that way we're different in right world. Now. Yeah. So, from my research, um, now you can, you know anybody can fact check me on this one, but in 1974 was the year that Richard Nixon took the gold away from our dollar. Now, if you've been working for 20 years of your life and you retired in 1972, a dollar was still worth what a gold piece of gold was, right? So you're, the way you've been taught for 30 plus years was save your money because it's backed by gold. However, in 1974, that all changed. That all changed when Nixon took the gold away from the dollar. So now we have inflation. Inflation, uh, it goes up, you know, between two to four percent every year. But um, it's an economy that we're in that's different. It's much yes. different than 1972. So now our currency and um, there again, fact check me on this one. But your dollar is now worth more or worth less. I'm sorry, lost worth 30 percent less than just when George Bush was in office. And that wasn't very long oh, it's ago. Gotta be, it's got to be less than that. Yeah, I think it, I it's think the last time I looked at that. it was like thirty-two percent. I want I want to say, um, <clears throat> don't quote me on that one, but I think it's about thirty to thirty-two percent. So here, less. here's going along with that. Here's what I tell people. Okay, I don't care about percentages. I don't care about numbers. I just I just want you to do this. Okay, when you go to the grocery store, is it more expensive or less expensive than it was last year? If it's more expensive, then we have a problem. Right? Exactly. That's 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 as, that's as simple as I can make it. You know, don't because numbers can be manipulated in percentages. It's like, okay, don't even worry about all that. Think about it practically. Okay. Is that gallon of milk more expensive or less expensive than last year? Yep. Think about uh, what's just happened in the first part of this year. Lumber prices, steel prices. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. my favorite my favorite thing to read on Facebook uh, recently has been um, the most flex thing you can do uh, is uh, <clears throat> is to shoot a uh, it's to shoot a box of nine millimeter ammo at a plywood target. You yep. know, the, uh, <laughs> That's most I mean, think thing like you practical do. things, not even like extravagant things, practical things, groceries, uh, meat, steel, uh, even silver has gone up a little bit. The essentials, yes, this it's all gone up. So inflation is happening and it's real. Don't worry about the reasons. Don't worry about all the blah, blah, blah. Just think about it, okay? It's yeah. more expensive to live. And certainly between now versus, you know, 1972. It absolutely <laughs> is. And that that's what the research has told me, you know, is uh, no longer is your currency worth what it was. So saving it, that means saving it, uh, and making 2% on it, it's not going to get you retired like it did. It used yes. to. That used to make make a lot of sense to your grandparents. Or, you know, to my grandfather, that made a lot of sense. And it did work out for him. 
However, this day and age, that doesn't, that's not the answer. Because you'll be 75 before you even get to retire if you make it that long. And right. then what, you got five years to live, right. 10 years maybe. So you worked 80 or you worked 70 years to, to live 10. That That's not a fair trade-off to me. Yeah, uh, 100% agree. And I've, uh, <clears throat> maybe I'll have you, uh, maybe we'll have a separate discussion on this. I'll do it with you. Um, but I want to do it with somebody because I'm actually a firm believer that like we need to kind of, scale back our retirement saving yes and focus more on generating income streams because especially when you think about like the coming hyperinflation that i really think is coming and the devaluation of the dollar and the fact that stocks and markets are so manipulated you know i'll, I'll never say don't have stocks but to me it's like why not have income streams that no matter what the markets are doing they're always making you money you know, yep. when you're 65 and you have income streams coming in, you don't need $4 million because you have all right. your income streams. And to me, that's, that's just a smarter way of retirement than the traditional method. What do you think about, about that? Well, it's, it's like you said, you know, my grandpa back in 1972, if I told him that I was going to leverage debt to buy a piece of property <laughs> for a asset, he would look at me like I'm crazy. He, so would he, probably, me, he probably would have backhanded you and said, are you stupid boy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He would have told me I'm an idiot. And I'm like, but now here in 2021, that's the way that's, that's what we're getting at. And um, I've learned that currency or dollars or. Uh -oh. uh, money assets 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 that's what's where where you need to be whether it be you invest into um a company or whether you buy a real estate property um you know recently i've i've started my own real estate company i have you know i have quite a few deals on the table right now we have two real estate to process that and once we get it processed, that's what they call cash flow. Once cash flow is, that's that's better than retirement. I don't I don't need retirement after I have cash flow. And right. so, yes, money is important. However, the currency is is depreciating by the day. So why would you invest in something that's depreciating and not invest in something that's appreciating, right. such as real estate and things like that? Yeah. And I mean, we, we talked about this. I'm a big um, real assets guy. Okay. So real estate, silver and gold, you can, <laughs> you can kind of, to me, you can kind of consider crypto as a real asset. Um, but at, also at the same time, I might say, you know, maybe not quite so real, but like get your, get the things you can feel and touch first. And then you can, you know, move into the more heavy investment type stuff. Um, at least that's, that's just kind of, that's just kind of the way I, f I, I see it. Um, and you, you're even talking about like getting into some of the more, uh, I guess, collector stuff like hot rods and things like that cars, cause you know how to work on them and things like that. Um, what are some other types of assets that you would say is, uh, you know, that people should be, should be looking at? I mean, so I like to, uh, personally, I like to broaden my portfolio. Right. So I'm not saying stocks are the are the answer. Crypto, not the answer. Uh, real estate may not be the answer. However, if you can pull a small small percentage from each very one well them, said. If you can if you can pull, let's say eight percent, eight percent from real estate, you can pull three percent from stocks, and then you can pull two percent from automotive, which is something that I am. Uh, that's just a passion of mine. That's what I love to do. And I know that how to make money on it. If you could do all that, it's the cumulative of all that. It's what you add together. That's what makes it worth it. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk about that just for a second, because every, just about every financial advisor that I've ever talked to um, has, has said, you know, you got to diversify, 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 but it's always been like diversity of stocks and bonds. It's never been like, hey, let's put some money into this real asset. Let's put some money into silver and gold. Let's put some money into 
I, I don't know, cars, let's put some money into yeah. something else, but it's always been stocks and bonds. And I feel like, you know, God dog it, man. If we're, if we're talking about true diversity, we really need to talk about all of the above. I love the way you said it, you know, stocks alone is not the answer. 401ks alone is not the answer. Absolutely. Real estate alone is not the answer. You have to, you have to have all of it. And to me, I feel like the real assets has been super overlooked by our financial system. Um, so what I, not, <clears throat> good. So the, the one thing I found that, uh, so the way I do my research is um, I read books and I read all these people ha who have done it. All right. So uh, there's two things, surround yourself with people who have done it so they can help you. And then two, the second thing I do is if I hear it more than four times, from four different people, it must mean it's true. So what I've heard from more than four people is diversify, right? And what that means is you need to have a stable, you need to have a uh, an investment, you need to have basically five sources of income. Five sources of income is At where least. you're going to be financially free. So five sources are better is going to get you to where you don't have to go to the nine to five. You don't have to go and answer to the boss. You can do what you want with your family and live life how it's supposed to be lived. Yeah. And, and not wait till you're 65 and you know, your kids are growing. You know, man, I'll just, I'll just be honest. Like our society enslaves people. It, it really does. You know, it's our society is like, go to college, get a job, work for 60 years. It's like, that is not, that is not freedom by any stretch of the imagination. And, you know, we are competing with each other for like the, the best slave position in a way, you know, like we're competing for the best jobs and the best positions. And so few of us think like, Hey, what if I took control of my own life? You know, well, kingdom gold, you know, what if I built my own kingdom and did something for myself where I, I didn't have to wait until I was 65 to enjoy my kids. And, and let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, you know, cause I know you're, you're a family, man. We kind of talked about this too. You know, that's what I'm, I want to watch my kids grow up and spend more time with my kids. I, I realized a couple of years ago that between, you know, like an hour and a half of commute time during the, you know, every day, and like bath time, bedtime, dinner time, I was only getting like at most two hours a day with my kids. And it's like, what if I could figure out a way to have three hours a day or five hours a day or 10 hours a day? You know, yeah. what to me, that is, that is, that's a, for me as a father, for sure. That's kind of, that's my goal of doing all this is to have more time for my kids, but also that they don't fall victim to the same slave system that, that we have you know, everybody needs a job. Everybody needs like some starting point, but you know, I don't want to just tell my girls that, and my soon to be, you know, my son's coming. I don't want to tell them that they, uh, they have to work at a job till they're 60 and then they can live life. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, it's, it's absolutely true. You know, in, in school, we are not taught this. Um, <laughs> and, then, and we're not taught how to be entrepreneurs. We're not taught how to make your own way. Uh, everybody talks about the American dream. Everybody talks about how right. you can make what you want and you can do what you want. However, 95 or I'd say at least 90 percent of Americans are enslaved to a job. They're enslaved. Absolutely. To, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, for me, it was five to four. But, you know, a nine to five is what I like to call it. Nine to five. And then you got to fight traffic. And then you got to fight grocery stores. Then you got to fight. What time are you getting, really getting with your family? Is that living? Is that really living? right because being at work no it's making money for five, someone five, else so they can live <laughs> yeah you know uh 40 50 hours a week at work and 30 hours a week or less at home that's not that's not living to me and we only have one life to live so why in the world spend it like that so that's why i've been you know i've been uh the military is really open my eyes about this because obviously I'm not at home with my children. I'm not home with my family right now. So it's really opened my eyes like because uh I have a plethora of children and why in the world am I not with them? 
you know really do you have a plethora how many you got i have five and uh possibly i did not know you had five you yeah, said five. a six on the way possibly yes yes i love i love kids i love family man it is absolutely the best thing i've met you know, when i was younger if you'd asked me if i'd have five kids absolutely not there's no way but here i am 33 years old and i'm like man, i wouldn't have it any other way it is absolutely it's never a dull moment and it's so much fun and i'm missing out on all of it by trying to please other people and work for the man right and I'm well, just congrats, like, congratulations i didn't realize you had five that's pretty cool yes i'm sure whenever you are home it's pretty uh it's pretty wild times yes well that's one thing the mili military has taught me is how to deal with five people at one time <laughs> so. but, but does it teach you how to deal with five in, kids at one time yes well i do i do with, <laughs> i do with more than five kids here and they're, that's they're, fair. they're not even biologically mine there you go <laughs> yeah so but no, you know, I, I've, I've learned over the years, it's like, you know, I mean, I'm getting close to retirement in the military and, and why in the world would I sit there and try to figure out any other way of going back to work? A lot of these guys that are retiring are like, well, we're trying, I'm trying to get a second stream of income when I get uh, retired. And I'm thinking, why? Why would I do that? Why not spend time with my children? Why not spend time at home where it counts? My children are only children for so many years. Right. That that's what bothers me, man. Like, <clears throat> I mean, that's a that's a huge problem with our society today is, you know, parents aren't spending enough time with their kids because they can't. You know, yep. they've been told they've been miseducated in this system for however many years. They have kids, they're off at work, someone else is raising their kids. And then, you know, oh, why do we have all these behavior issues? Oh, it's the it's the violent video games. It's the blah, right. blah, blah. It's, it's like, no, it's like else, parents are parents are out working and they can't do anything about it. Yep. Uh, or at least most of them can't, you know, and <clears throat> and they just feel stuck. You know, and unfortunately, and due to inflation, uh, it takes two two incomes to, to make a household work. You know, back in uh, 1952. Yeah, the man went to work, the woman took care of the house, and everything was good to go because you had extra money after that, and everything was hunky-dory. However, here in 2021, a man will work 60 hours a week and still not have enough, so it takes that second income. And when it takes that second income, you have babysitters and uh, daycares raising your children. Yes. And I don't. And those cost okay. money, too. Yeah, and, and then you're paying for that. And I just... You know, we've been so ingrained in society to work, work, work until you retire, you know, and uh, that that whole uh, ingraining started back in the close to World War Two when they didn't have enough uh, factory workers. Right. So they started training children how to sit in one room for nine hours a day with a pencil and learning them how to how to do what they're told. Well, here it is, 2021, that school system hasn't changed. And however, the world has. Oh, so yeah. We need to come together and figure out what do we need to do different? Why Why in the world do I need to go to a 95 when I can do something else? See, so that's so, why I started investing. Yeah, man. And that, that to me, that's, that's my big motivator of what I'm doing. You know, I want to, I want to help people start their own home-based businesses and, you know, whenever I was looking for something, I was always like, why can't I just go somewhere and essentially like buy a package? And then that's what I do is like my home based business. And I right. feel like that's what I've created for people like, hey, look, I got the training. I got the, the links. I got the website set up. I got everything you need. Just come get this and, you know, we'll work it together. Um, but because I don't feel like there's enough time to like let the school system re-educate my kids you know i realize that i need to be home as much as i can now because the school system is just going to do what the school system has been doing you know uh what is it reading writing and arithmetic or something like that um and and the same like assembly line type curriculum that has been around forever for from yeah. our standpoint um it's not getting any better anytime soon 
So no. to me, that's even more reason to, for me to be financially free, but also to help other parents be financially free because we're at, we're at a very critical point in our society, in our country, where we have to re-educate or educate properly the next generation or we're, we're in a bind, man. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, <clears throat> if you leave it in the government's hands, we're all going to be in ruins. That's my belief. No, that's just me. Now, you personally may believe that the government's great. However, I work for the people. Uh, uh, I can tell you, it's I'm I'm not really impressed. And so, from my 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 standpoint is we need we need to get together and get our head together and figure out how are we going to how are we going to make our own way. Right. Because depending on the government is not the way, and they. The inflation's going up. The price of everything's going to go up. Yeah. The education system's going to go down. That's the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. You know, the currency, it's going to be more and more worthless. So what's the point in even investing in it? Why would you invest in currency if it's more worthless than it was yesterday? Right. That doesn't make any sense to me. So uh, real estate is the, the point of entry for me. Uh, I also have an automotive business. And uh, we're trying to, uh, it's just something I love to do. I love to build hot rods. I love classic cars and I love to, that, you know, that's one of my passions. How did so you get into thing, that? I, I, a hot wheel when I was five years old, to be honest. Uh, you know, me and my, me and my best friend, we, we played hot wheels as kids and I've been stuck ever since. So, okay. Uh, I've always wanted to do it and I've always wanted, you know, I've always had my own little projects, I guess you'd say. But then I kind of figured out you can make money doing this. And um, so kind of moving forward, I, I just as fun, really, I just uh, started doing it as a as a hobby, I guess you'd say. And I realized I can make money. Uh, but that's also something I would tell everybody. If if you're going to pick something to not go to a nine to five for, it would definitely be something you're passionate about. Don't 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 get into something that you're that you feel like it's a nine to five just because it's not nine to five, you know, like right. don't get in the stock market. If it really bothers you down, you know, I love numbers and I love, I love the stock market. That's why I do it. Um, however, it's not my passion. So don't get into something that, you know, don't get into grocery store business. If you're not a grocer, you know, if that's not what you will love to do. So automotive is classic cars is what I love to do. So I figured out how to make money from it. And I'm, I'm just I'm gonna there. I'm gonna play devil's advocate a little bit just because I think this will be fun discussion. Um, but there's a little bit of there's a little bit of balance to that too, right? Because you can't <clears throat> if I'm really passionate about underwater basket weaving. That's one of the things my dad always said. I don't really know why, but underwater basket weaving, I just love it. And I decide that I'm gonna do that, you know, for the rest of my life. You know that. I might be passionate about it, but I still have to like bring home the bacon, you know? So that's right. what, what, what would you say is like the, uh, the balancing act to do there between passion and I guess the real world. If you can't pay for it twice, then don't buy it. And I make really good baskets. So, you know, it'd be hard to pay for those twice. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I, I buy some of these automotive stuff and I can easily buy them three times. And, um, and then I, I make them in something better and I sell them for three times as much. Um, you know, don't, don't let your passion overrun your life. Remember your family, remember your investments. Uh, I'm an investor first and uh, I'm in, I'm investing in uh, real estate, automotive. Um, I've actually been in contact with a guy today uh, about making one of the first whiskey brands in Louisiana. Um, something i'm interested in now whether it pans out you're there's no you don't know. the first one from louisiana the first major whiskey brand from louisiana yes there's plenty of moonshines private uh beer draft companies but uh as far as whiskey because uh, there's a there is a difference um there's not a major whiskey brand from louisiana and, and come I find guess out. i'm a little so i'm i'm very much not in the drinking game but i'm uh I guess I'm a little bit surprised to hear that, you know, there's no Louisiana whiskey that kind of surprises me. 
Yes, yes. There's small, there's small breweries. There's small um, moonshine kind of places, I guess you'd say. There's not a, there's not a major distillery that I know of or anybody I know of that knows a distillery in Louisiana. Well, if you need uh, somebody to program your automation for you, I'm your guy. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Because <laughs> I have learned, um, you know, I, I'm also a whiskey kind of guy, so I've, I've done some research on that or just out of fun. Um, but here in the South, whiskey actually distills better than it does further North. So your Tennessee whiskey, your Jack Daniels, your Jim Beam, your stuff like that, it actually distills slower than it does in the South. So some of your Rebecca Creeks, your Texas whiskeys, your, uh, Austin stills. And uh -oh. Actually distill faster than, than they do up North. So Texas has quite a few since 2008 popping up. However, Louisiana does not. So interesting. Uh, All right. I, I, it, how do you keep hitting your mute button? I got to, I got to know now there's got to be some kind of technical army army. Yeah. Plenty of army people. Can you hear me? I can now. Um, uh, uh oh you're muted again hey there you go yeah i got like 13 army people calling me no they'll, they'll call back oh so when you get a call it mutes it i assume so interesting yeah i, I assume so. i did not know that okay mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. <laughs> boy how, that would be crazy like if someone if you accidentally answered like a top secret call and it got broadcasted on a zoom meeting <laughs> It probably wouldn't work out too good, would it? No, that would be it. That would be a bad idea. No, we uh, no, it, it's nobody important. It's some of my lower enlisted, you know, uh, soldiers. I'll call them back after I'm done. But cool. So, so what's the? Let's talk a little bit more about passions because what I was trying to figure out for a long time was, um, you know, as you well know, I have a I have a gift and really a passion for teaching a lot of it comes from like, I'll, I had a lot of terrible teachers and I had to figure out so much on my own and I don't want anyone else to have to like go through that if they don't have to. Um, so that, that's kind of why I started doing this was like, I, was, I had a way that I could, uh, I guess, monetize my passion. How would you advise um, other people if they had a, uh, if they had a passion, but didn't quite know how to monetize it what would you say would be a good way they could, um, or at least try to do something like that? Well, it, it's all about, uh, from my perspective, it's all about setting up a good portfolio. So you need a good baseline, right? Uh, a baseline would be something that it's not going to go away. Something that's going to. So what in the world would not go away in a long time? Uh, those are your, your precious metals, like, gold silver platinum things like that that may you know that that's kind of what uh our economy is based off of so that's a good baseline get your baseline going make you a savings account once you get so much saved up start investing that and my my rule of thumb is 20 percent of your paycheck needs to be paid as a bill and you pay your paycheck into a, a mutual fund ira or um, stock market. You know, now if you're stock savvy, savvy, and you want to do that yourself, go for it. Uh, if not, uh, there's plenty of uh, funds that you can buy out there. Van, uh, Vanguard, um, Acorns. There's a lot of apps that make it easier for people and invest. Uh, once you make that, you know, once you make that investment and you have enough uh, liquid assets, and if you don't know what that, you know, don't know what that is, Google it. Google liquid assets. If you got enough Google uh, enough liquid assets, then you start going into real estate, real estate, and then you start leveraging debt. You start leveraging um, getting assets, and was those assets will then cash flow you money, and then you grow from there. I'm I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm just going to give you. I'm just going to say my angle to it. See, 
I, I call it uh, I call it that the the opportunity fund, like basically build up enough of a cash reserve where you can go do whatever you want with it, put it in stocks, put it in, um, you know, buy a business, do an income stream, something like that. And I just I really feel like if you can get two solid income streams going, you should do that before you start stocks or other types of investing like i really feel like we're, we're so lacking in the cash flow area that that's why it's so hard for people to do the investing um yeah. do you do you would you i guess at least somewhat agree with that or do you think that or do you think that investing should happen kind of from the get-go well the only reason um i don't necessarily disagree with it but the only reason i say stocks is because you can get into uh, smaller uh, positions with stocks <clears throat> and mutual funds. Uh, mutual funds is a great way. You can get into uh, a mutual fund for, uh, you know, whatever extra money you got. You can get into a mutual, mutual fund with. Um, stocks, you can also get into a small position with. Um, if calculated correctly, let me say that. If calculated correctly, that will bring you uh, return on investment, your ROI. Okay, so if your ROI is three percent, you've you've done well in the stock market. So if your ROI brings you three percent, build that up to a portion to where you can then uh, have a thirty to forty percent down payment on a liquid asset. So that then then you can liquidate <clears throat> that money to become an asset in the real estate business, the automotive business. If you want to get in a diamond business, whatever it is that you do, <laughs> make it an asset, okay? Sapphires, and man, sapphires, come on. You can you can grab a hold to, and that appreciates in value. That's what an asset is, okay? So it doesn't matter if you, if you put your liquidity into tires. If they're going to make at, if they're going to make value, then go for it. Now, however, tires don't do that, but if you, whatever you put your money into, whatever your passion is, put it into that, grab a hold to it. And I would say put 30 to 40% down on whatever it is, leverage that asset, have someone, and, and that's why I love real estate so much is I have someone else pay for the loan plus some for five to six years. And due to inflation, that value of that home is going to go up. So now it's worth just off of inflation alone, it's worth three to four percent more than what I bought it for. Right. And then I try to buy it low. So when I sell it, I try to sell it high. So but be between buying low, selling high, plus inflation and all the equity that I have in the house from the renter or whoever buying into it, I sell it and I 1023 that into a bigger facility and make even more. And if anybody's uh, kind of curious about it, what a 1023 is. I believe it's 20, 10, 1023. Anyway, you, you take an asset and move it from one asset and buy another asset and it's tax free. So I don't know any truth to this, um, but I have a cousin who's big into real estate and word on the street is they're either changing or doing away with, I think it's, I want to say it's 1021, 1023, whatever it is, 1020 X. Uh, I want to say yeah. they're doing away with that at some point. Or at least They're that's the, to... <clears throat> you think it's going to happen? Yeah, no, no, that's what it was. It was happen. some kind of proposition uh, that Biden was wanting to put out or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen because of what the capital gains tax that just came out the other day uh, from Joe Biden. Um, so I, I think he's kind of retreated and think saying, so? well, a 1021 or a 1023, 1020X is not going to work. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to go with a higher capital gains tax. <clears throat> so I think that's why he pushed the 43% uh, capital gains tax. Uh, that makes all everybody feel better that the rich is going to get taxed. However, the rich is always going to find a way out. So that, man, that's why I, I have been hearing. Uh, so I, I'm 35. I've been hearing, you know, make the rich pay their fair share for, all of my adult life yeah it's like okay if they haven't paid their fair share by now 
it's probably not going to happen. And it's certainly not going to happen between one president to another, to another, to another. It's right. the, the system that we have on a, on a, a national for sure, but on a global scale that th those types of, you know, tax the rich, rich type initiatives are just not going to work. No, no, Donald Trump plays less taxes than I do. And there's a reason for that because Donald That's Trump, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Donald Trump knows what he's doing more than I do. So um, that, you know, that's my next set of research that I'm going to be doing, especially when I, you know, I start uh, moving, making moves towards back home is I want to know how in the world do I, do I, do I write this off? How do I get out of this, this tax? You know, I paid uncle Sam his due. Uh, I, in the world do I get back? You know what I'm saying? How do I get out of that? So right. I'm going to be looking at that heavily. Um, however, yeah, you can you can scream tax writ. You're a you're a very popular man, Daniel. No, it's nonstop. <laughs> it's nonstop. But, well, do you uh, do you put it on uh, do not disturb at night or can you or what? Like how how do you sleep? Yeah, oh, it's very rare. I get I get a few hours of nap here and there. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. So. Well, I, I certainly appreciate what you're what you're doing. Um, so definitely, thank you for your service. Um, and actually, I might uh, I want to talk to you a little bit more about this because one of my passions, you know, let's let's talk about it now. We got time. How much time you got? I got time. Sweet. So if I wanted to talk for like three more hours, you're good. Yay! Whatever they can wait. <laughs> okay. Don't tell them I said that though. Right. <laughs> so one of my one of my big passions is. Um, so soldiers, you know, Marines, military, I'll just say it like that, police officers, um, teachers, EMTs, whatever that, you know, I feel like I've, I've got a good system where I can um, help people uh, become or like have their own home based business to get tax breaks, but also to get, you know, another stream of income. I mean, that's, that's a double whammy right there. As far as financial assistance, if you can get an income stream and extra tax breaks. So, you know, I want to be able to come up with, you know, good marketing messages and good systems to help people um, in those particular categories, be able to either, you know, do what they love like teachers or maybe um, police officers or people like you guys in the military who are out there doing whatever they're doing. So they don't necessarily have the time to do their own home-based businesses. You know, what would be, advise me a little bit, like what would be a good way to reach out to some, to some folks like that um, to kind of help them get off the ground too? Um, well, you know, like I said, the, the time I've had, I've spent in most of it um, in the stock market. However, um, I, you know, with the market going down, I, I wouldn't technically advise it. Uh, however, there is an avenue called wholesaling and uh, wholesaling houses can be done virtually if, if done right. Okay. Uh, so wholesaling how, uh, real estate is, is basically I'm going to pay you 50,000 for this house. I'm going to sell it to somebody else for 80,000. And you're going to make 20,000. So everybody makes money. Everybody's happy. But I'm basically flipping a contract is what it is. Hmm. Um, was able to do that a couple of times, but it's, it's, you got to have like a network set up for that kind of thing. So it's a little harder. Um, I've gotten in the stock market. Uh, I've dabbled into the crypto just to just kind of, you know, I've made some good money. I've lost some good money on crypto. Did you get any so, Dogecoin? Yeah, I did. I did get into did Dogecoin. You? However, did, yeah, I, I did not think that Dogecoin is a very long-term investment. <laughs> uh, I was uh, what they call short selling on that. Really? Uh, yeah. So I've made I've made good money uh, on crypto. I've lost good money on crypto. Um, it just depends what you're worth what what you're worth risking. I would tell you never risk anything that you're not willing to lose. So. I've made I've made I've made a good a chunk of money this year just off of that alone. 
um, because I don't really have time to, to go look at houses and do things in real estate and stuff like that. Um, however, if you're not the type of person that wants to look at, um, you know, analysis and look at trend lines and, and do the things that I do every day, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, it's, I don't know, I guess it's almost like an addiction to me or like a hobby. Um, if that's not what you want to do, I would advise something like an Acorns, uh, TD or Mayor Trade. Even most of your banks now, they have good funds and look for a good fund manager. And just take the what I call the Donald Quave approach. That was my grandfather. Take his approach. Take 20 to 30% of your income, put it in there, forget about it. And once you have enough that you can maybe borrow against or make liquid then you then you can get into real estate or like i said diamonds whatever it is that you want right. to right gold and silver man come on bro gold, yeah, yeah gold and silver that's <laughs> that's a real good one I, yeah, that's no. a good baseline to start with because at the end of the day stock market crashes the real estate market crashes then what you get left with you know um gold and silver is a good one to good good one to be with um my personal my personal belief and my personal way i invest is a uh i do a, about a five to ten percent depending on what the paycheck looks like five to ten percent I'll, I'll do i'll stack it up until i can get me some silver or gold or something like that something like that put that in the safe at home and that is my stable that yep. is my can't go nowhere yep yeah and i do want to uh i do want to Maybe clarify, but also maybe just make sure you agree with what I'm saying. So when you're talking about putting money aside in the like the the twenty percent bill, um, like the the Donald Quave approach. Um, <clears throat> see, I am one hundred percent for that, with the exception of as long as it's not in. Okay, this is not financial advice. Right. I, I'm okay with that as far as it's not as long as it's not in a retirement account. Just right. because you can't touch that money for 30 years. You're right. And most yeah. of us that do 401k, you know, to me, it's like just put enough to get your company match, but then don't do a penny more because if you can't touch that money for 30 years, you can't generate more income streams. And right. this is, this is a little bit of the conspiracy theories coming out in me. I'll, I'll be honest, but I really feel like that's why they put in those penalties and, um, <clears throat> uh what what's uh what's the right word that i'm looking for that they're, they're trying to make you put money into the stock market and keep it there and like not let you be able to start a business or to buy a rental property or something because it keeps feeding this this machine of like labor or enslavement <laughs> yeah and absolutely I, I believe the same thing is like um if you're going to do an to me it would be a Roth IRA um, the only reason I say that is because you can borrow against it if you want to borrow if you want to leverage that debt against uh, say an uh, asset then you could be doing something um, however Mutual funds are great because you can pull out anytime you want to. Um, uh, gold and silver stocks, those are great. But before you do any of that, save up and get you some gold and silver because that needs to be the baseline, the foundation, if you will, in which you build your portfolio. You know, if you build your portfolio on gold and silver, then you're house your portfolio per se will be stronger for it absolutely you have something to hold on to and something that's right and and while you're muted and your video is gone <laughs> i'll just say like so w i don't know when you learned this i feel like it was fairly recently it was fairly recently for me banks are only required to hold i think up to 10 percent of the of the money that they is it three now three three percent so if you have one dollar 
they can i think the math on that is 30 they can loan out 30 dollars off of your one dollar and that's they're correct. doing all these shell games and that's why there's like the big crash in 08 and um I, a very long story short that's why there's a lot of stuff that i don't like with the markets and the banks and stuff and to me that's why I like physical assets physical gold and silver um, because they do the same thing with like the the gold etfs and stuff like that i've actually been reading stuff recently that it's like the, some of these etfs they are leasing gold that they've borrowed yeah and like giving a certificate and multiple certificates for the same amounts of gold yeah it's like, how is this even how is this you even legal? yeah you're basically buying a portion of that ounce of gold <clears throat> That's what it basically boils down to. Uh, it's, it's it's the same strategy they use in mutual funds. So a mutual fund is nothing more than a group of stocks that a fund man they, they determine that it's a good idea and they, inv they invest you into a very small percentage of each stock. And then those stocks grow together and he pulls <laughs> as he decides to go. And so once he pulls and pulls stocks that he, he wants to make sure that the fund overall grows. And once you, the fund overall grows, so does your money. Same thing with ETF stock. They're doing the same thing. They give a certificate for, they might give me the same ounce of gold they give you. That just, oh, that just irks me so bad. It, it's like, how do you, how do you sleep at night fun. doing that? Yeah. That that's how the that's how they that's how they make money on, on Wall Street, brother. They come and up I with just, these all these tricks of the trade that's within the legal law and go run with it. <laughs> yeah, and and I get that it's legal, but just man, it's so it's so false to me. You know, it's so it's absolutely. I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just such a, a fake smoke and mirrors thing. And people like us that don't have these millions of dollars for attorneys and CPAs and all this stuff, you know, we end up losing. We end up paying the bill. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Even and more to my conspiracy theory that that's why there's all this education of put all your money in a 401k, put all your money into funds and blah, 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 because they keep making money off of it, whether or not you do. That's right. That's right. And it, it's great to make the money after you have your baseline to make your money to buy your assets. I would never tell anybody, you know, to to 100% involve yourself into the stock market and that's it. It's not the answer. Yes. You can have a small percentage or a small position into the real estate market. That's great. That's a, that's a great idea. However, assets and liquid assets more than anything is where it needs to be. So you take some of that, uh, some of your stock portfolio and you put it into the liquid assets form, real estate, things like that. Then you have your five forms of income. That's where you're financially free. That's you know? it, man. And that's, you know, that's like I told my wife, I don't care if $2 made me financially free then I'd be, I'd want to be a dollar mayor. You know, but it takes more than that these days. So I want to do whatever it takes to make me and her free so we can stay at the home and be with our children every day. And that's all I ask for is I just want to be Amen, with, man. With, time with them. And what it takes is five sources of income, your baseline, your stock portfolio, your asset, your assets and your income. And then once you make interest on all that, reinvest. And once you have those five sources of income, you're you're well on your way. You start making it grow, and you make you you work the process. And that that's the research that I've found, you know. And I'm you know I'm probably in what step two, three, something like that. I'm not I'm not there yet, but I will not take no for an answer. And I know I will get there one day. And I don't care who tells me I can't. I'm going to show them different, you and can't. I will be financially free. You can't do it. No. Watch me work. <laughs> right. as, uh, as Larry the Cable Guy would say, hold a beer and watch this. <laughs> Man, I haven't heard Larry the Cable Guy in a long time. <laughs> That's right.
That's right. Yeah. You know, um, totally unrelated, but uh, I did not know until way longer that his real name was not Larry. No, it's it's not. That's a completely yeah. fic- uh, fictitious name. Yeah, it, it, was, it was probably a solid like twelve years after his career peaked that I that I learned that. Yeah, yeah, no, I I didn't learn that until probably a couple of years ago. No, no. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel I, a little better I, now. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, I mean, when he was at his peak, I guess nobody would say his real name, but you know, I don't know. No, I, right. I, I, I've recently re, uh, realized he's from Florida. Is like, he really? Like the beach, Florida? Yeah. Like he's from he's like from a beach area. He's not even redneck <laughs> at all. But I feel so betrayed. Right, right. But <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's no one going to tell me no, and I'm going to make it happen. And, yeah, uh, I, I said a day, similar thing. Like even if I don't accomplish it, I'm going to die trying. It's better to try and and try and fail than never try at all. Yeah, no, I said the exact same thing. I said, I, I literally said, like, I'm either going to succeed at this or die trying because I can't. Yeah. Because I'm already losing. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to a nine to five. You know, I'm I'm doing things with the army right now. I don't see my children, so I'm losing already. So what's the point in not trying? Why Absolutely. Would I try? Absolutely. Man. Yeah. All right. So. Um, <clears throat> So I guess we can, we've been going about an hour. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let's do one more question for for tonight because I have a feeling we'll be talking about a lot of stuff in the future. Um, here's the problem I have. I have a lot of problems. Here's the problem for this discussion. <laughs> Don't we all? Yep. I am trying to wake up guys in our age. Um, I guess kind of young people in general. So in that like twenty five to forty five bracket. Yeah. Um, but really, you know, especially young guys like us, you know, I'm 35 or 33. I feel like there's just so many guys out there that are just totally clueless to the financial state that they're in, but also the state that they're setting up their families, their future families, their future children, their future wives. How, however you want to say that, you know, the, the, I'm trying to wake up people to the fact that we cannot afford to just sit back and hope and pray to God that we have enough to retire. And then maybe we can live like we can't, well, like both literally and metaphorically. Okay. We cannot afford to do that. So what is a way that we can impress upon people and like wake people up to this truth that we are in a bind if we do not take our financial security seriously? So, you know, it, it doesn't, it takes a lot more than t- telling somebody because they feel like they're being sell- sold something. Um, <clears throat> I've been doing some research while I've had a little bit of downtime here. So I've been trying to share this with, with, uh, they were enlisted, uh, soldiers and they all look at you like, like you're trying to sell them something. So this is the deal I make them. I say, I tell them this. There's an application or an app on your phone called Acorns. Sorry about that. <laughs> but there's a uh, there's an app on your phone or on Google Play, App Store, whatever you want. Um, there's an app that you can get called Acorns. Get the Acorns app and take half or just a thousand dollars. It doesn't matter. Whatever your savings account is. Take a thousand dollars, I would say half, just so it makes it fair, and put it in your acorns account. At the end of the month, whichever one makes more interest or makes you more money, your savings account or the acorns account, you take the rest of the money and you put it in the other account. And 10 out of 10 times, I'm going to have a soldier put their money back into investments because investments always bring you back. ROI higher than a savings account because the bank account is going to use your money. They only have to hold 3% of it and they're going to leverage your money to other people, just like you should be doing for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like that. I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to chew on that on my end. I like the idea of like, go try this. Like here, literally just go do this, try for a month and see what happens. 
um i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to figure out a way to to do more of that on my end yeah i mean that's what i tell my troops is you know if you have let's say you have ten thousand dollars in your savings account take five five of it and put it in an acorns account and whichever one makes the most money you take the other five thousand and if the savings account makes more money take that five thousand out of acorns close it down put it back in your savings account if your savings account makes less more money, take the other five thousand, put it in say in, in an Acorns account. But I guarantee you that Acorns account, because it's an investment account into mutual funds and stocks, it's going to make you more money. Right. Instead of six cents, twelve cents, or something like that, that your savings account is going to give you, you're going to be making more like twenty dollars or thirty dollars. So, what you think is better? In one month, you're going to make more in an investment account than you would a year in a savings account so why would you save your money it's right. depreciating in value doesn't make sense to me Absolutely. so every soldier i've talked to so far they've always told me thank you sergeant i appreciate that because i had no idea and a lot of people don't but once they figured it out it does make sense why would you put you something putting something in a savings account it's going to make you less money than your investment right Yep. Good stuff, man. Well, Dan, I really appreciate your time, man. Um, I guess now I'll let you go answer all your phone calls that you've been missing. <laughs> yeah. I get back to my business again. Yep. And, uh, but yeah, I really appreciate you, man. Uh, good discussion. I feel like we're going to have a lot of good discussions in the future. Um, I know I haven't met your wife, but tell her I said, Hey, as well. And, uh, we'll holler at you later, man. Sure. will. appreciate it. Y'all have be good. Yep. You too, bud. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye.